what's up guys so uh, in this video I'm gonna go over something new which I think a lot of you are gonna like um, I went over parameter input in another video of mine so in this video I'm gonna go over another very popular way to take input in Java and remember that one of the um, problems of parameter input that I had discussed were that um, you can't it's not feasible to input let's say a hundred variables using the parameters though it's possible it's not feasible it's not viable to do that so in this video what I'm gonna go over is I'm gonna well go over something called buffered reader which many people find a bit daunting at first but I'll try my best to explain it to you so now a buffered reader is predefined in Java it's a class that has already been written in the Java language like system.out.println buffer data has also b already been written in Java so well now in buffer data what you need to do is it's part of a package in Java called the IO package now the IO stands for input output so if any of you are wondering so in buffer data let's say you you wanted to use buffer reader in your program so you're, you're just telling the compiler like uh, hey buddy I want to use something of yours so just let me so the statement for that is import you write import java dot i o dot and you use a semicolon now what the semi uh, I'm sorry uh, an asterisk not a semicolon you use an asterisk the asterisk means that everything in that package your asking you're just telling Java uh, hey Java I'm just gonna borrow your IO package for a while I'm just gonna take everything that there is I'm just gonna take the whole box and I'm gonna use it so don't worry about the import statement then you write your class name class import I had already created my class um, then you define your function public void main and remember this while using buffer reader you cannot take any parameter input at least not in your main function then you write throws and you write IO exception and please um, take careful care to note the case IO exception IO E are capital and throws everything is small now let me go over this this these two words throws and IO exception well in Java when you have a problem during runtime it's called an exception any error that you have during runtime it's called an exception now there is a class which handles um, which has the definition of every possible exception that can occur and that handles it and you know it sort of fixes it itself it's called an exception handler so what you're telling Java right now is basically you're saying uh, hey Java um, if there's any sort of exception like for example the IO exception which can occur while taking input output you're just telling it just throw it away I don't care throw it away let it be so that's throws don't worry about it I'll go over exception handler later and okay so this is yeah that's pretty much the setup that you need for your class and function then while you go into your function you have to create an object for the buffered reader class now there are many ways to do this you can write input stream reader isr is equal to new input stream reader bracket system dot in then you can write buffered reader br br stands for buffered reader equals new buffered reader isr semicolon and if I were to hit compile it would compile perfectly fine won't give me any errors now let me go over this code now what happens in Java is when you type something in the keyboard that is when it goes to system.in which then transfers it on to the input stream reader which reads the input which transfers it on to buffered reader now um, 
in very simple terms what I what these two lines have done is they've created objects of input stream reader and buffer reader I had explained ob objects and classes in the first video and I'll go over it very briefly again the syntax for creating an object is class name object name equals new class name if there are any parameters put those in now object name can be defined by you class name is the class of which you want to create an object so if I wanted to create an object for the input class called input I would write input input equals new input and I know that sounds very funny but um, let's say you wanted to create an object um, football of the class sports so you would write sports football equals new sports so that's just how you create objects so what you're doing here is you're creating an input stream reader object first then you're telling Java while that you know you'll call it ISR and it's equal to new now what new does is it just creates an, a new instance of a class and an instance of a class is an object so it creates a new object and um, you say input stream reader system.in now system.in is what reads from the keyboard I have discussed that now you can make this whole process a little simpler instead of writing these two lines you can do the same thing in one line I'll show you how let's say I cut this whole part off new input stream reader system.in and well I have put that into the parameter for buffer reader and I remove this so you've created your buffer reader in one line now let me tell you why this happens the buffer reader was taking an input stream reader as its parameter all you did is you created the input stream reader didn't give it a name and what you did is you created an anonymous class an anonymous class is one that well it does its job and then it ceases to exist so if I were to say anything like ISR something now it because ISR doesn't exist so you can't call that you can't call it in your class in your function I'm sorry um, yeah so that's how you create a buffer reader object and I'm sorry if this video is getting long it's a very important concept so what you do now is let's say you want to take input from the user so you write system dot out dot print ln you have to tell the user what you want let's say you tell them enter a number and you want to take the number as input so let's say int num if you write int num equals integer dot parse int br dot read line bracket now let me go over this line now what integer is it's a wrapper class it wraps up the integer data type it's it's nothing to worry about just theory now parse int is a function in this wrapper class so there's a function in this wrapper class which takes in something that something here is br dot read line now br dot read line you're calling the read line function of your buffered reader object so to call a function from an object you write object name dot function name and your brackets that's how you call a function and when I do functions then this whole thing will become really really simple for you so br dot read line now what br dot read line does is it returns a string now obviously if you want a number you're not going to store a string in the integer data type as a number so this parse int function takes in a string parses it or converts it into an int or an integer and stores it here let's say you wanted to store a double it would just become double n equals double dot parse double oops I'm sorry my keyboard acted up yeah pass double br dot read line if you wanted to show a string string s equals br dot read line you don't need to pass anything because br dot read line returns a string so let me just try running this video we'll take in the number input from the what am I saying I'm so sorry running this program not running this video um, take in the number from the user and print it so we create an object of our input class 
call the void main function it asks us enter a number let's say we type 8734 press enter it prints 8734 so you can see our program is working so I'd like to give you like a program for homework except a person's except a person's name address and phone number and print it as simple as that and I'll go over the solution in the next video so that's all for this video have a good day thanks